What's up, guys? Uh, I've got a lot to share with you. I've actually played a little bit on the PTR uh, with this update, but I feel uh, I can kind of fill you in on some of the key takeaways, at least what stand out to me. Uh, overall, we're going to go through these, I think, pretty quickly, and we're going to talk about some of the meaty changes that are actually coming, uh, you know, to the game in May. Um, but they're already now live and uh, maybe a little bit broken already on uh, the PTR. So thanks for checking out this video. Also, thanks guys. Uh, you've given me 4,000 hours of watch time, uh, which is one of the requirements to partner and over 700 subscribers. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that support. Uh, welcome to the channel and hopefully you enjoy uh, this video. Now we're going to scroll through a lot of these fixes, especially as it relates to the dungeons. Um, but we want to talk about a couple of things here. Uh, remove the ability to use non-arena consumables in PvP arenas. I think this is a really interesting one. If I highlight that here for you guys. Uh, the reason ends up being that this is important is, especially as it's broken right now, that means you're not taking food into the arena. That means you're not taking potions. And if we actually scroll down, you'll see that they've actually added the PvP arena consumables that are direct focus on what is going on so i like that here uh on the screen for some reason whatsoever i don't know what we're doing we're playing it as we as we play it um so i want to go through the uh, pvp arena changes for you guys and i think essentially if this actually is currently broken on the ptr i was not able to use any of the any of the potions themselves so the match actually went really quickly uh overall lots of fun and interesting aspect if people can't generally heal but i think we want to be using these potions this was a big item that's been asked for by everybody uh you know at least that's the biggest feedback amount that i've seen on the forms and this does change some of my uh you know recommendations as it comes down to preparation for the patch because now you're not going to be providing them potions let me know where you fall on that debate um however this is going to make it a lot more user friendly to get in and not necessarily have a massive amount of cost uh, to playing in it. Anyway, uh, the 3v uh, P introductory quest NPC has, can actually now be found in Everfall. So they've added a quest that gets associated with it. They've adjusted the scoreboard so it does not overlap with other UI elements. They fixed a variety of things. And when it comes down to it, hands on, they got an announcer who's going to announce the countdown and do a little taunting. And it sounds great. In fact, actually, the first version of the PTR that was out, I was having some audio issues. But this brings a lot of character to the mode. In fact, if you guys think of Destiny 2 with Shax, if you think of Halo with the Halo announcer, uh, note that there's like there is some flavor text that gets added and helps build up the hype. So I actually going hands on. I think they knocked that out of the park. They've adjusted the things regarding winning, losing XP overall like all of this is still in flux so i don't want to spend too much time on it i wanted to highlight guys for you all the consumables because if it was working i think this is going to end up being uh better however uh with no food buffs and no food that like it drops off your menu so i'm wondering if we'll end up seeing like you know slot one for health slot two for region slot three for mana slot four for attribute or something like that we'll have to wait and see as that kind of rolls out for the war they've reworked bonuses provided by faction points and here are the bonuses now. I want to highlight, guys, for you. Uh, obviously, fast travel is pretty free, but if you control Restless Shore, all fast travel is free. I would love to know what you guys think about that perk. I think that's pretty freaking wild. Weaver's Fin uh, decreases the total, uh, total global count of tax by 10%. Wind's Word increases the chance that a consumable isn't consumed by 10%. Not as good as fast travel free, in my opinion. Reek Water increases the amount of PvP XP earned by 5%. Morningdale increases gear score ceiling I've crafted by five. Maximum is still 600, but overall, that's just going to increase your chance for your roll. Monarch's Bluff, all experience gains 5%. This is garbage until they find something to do with experience at level cap. I really hope that we see some kind of attribute system, like attribute, that same kind of thing with the uh, systems we have for, <laughs> why am I forgetting the name? Um, um, anyway, we'll go with it. The A system, we'll call it and adding that to something with experience where you can still get like gypsum and things like that. First light increases global refining yield by 10. Everfall increases the amount of his assault gain by 10%. Evan scale decreases the cost of items by faction. Cutlass keys increases global gathering luck by 10. Ooh, uh, that's a good one. Uh, camping no longer costs resources if you have Brightwood. Uh, this uh, looks like the, uh, this is obviously the faction control point. So that in my mind, that's the forts in the zones. But the problem with that is that they should put some kind of lockout on when you take over a fort at least from, you know, kind of like no tag backs in a game of tag, namely because we've gone and controlled forts 
and all you do is leave and then somebody just kind of runs in and, and recaptures it it'd be interesting to see if there was some kind of incentive that I don't know. I, th I think there's still work that can be done when it comes down to the fort system. I go back and forth on it. If you guys have any ideas, you feel free to educate me on your opinion and why, you know, why it would be interesting. Because at the end of the day, like, I, th I think it still needs a lot. And the only thing I could come up with is a no tag back system, at least like some kind of cooldown so that if you go and you capture a fort, then you, then, you know, you can leave and go and take on those advantages rather than having to sit here and be like, well, guys, if we leave, we don't get the ve the benefit right like if you leave the fort like it's gonna just go right back to whoever had it and uh and you don't end up getting to take advantage of that benefit so some kind of incentive in that regards would be great uh some uh, weapon bug fixes overall nothing that i think is uh, like too substantial but note that i'm not a fire staff user i just started leveling fire staff as i work on all my weapon leveling uh so just note that's coming soon economy and progression Here's a couple big things I think uh, are really important to stand out. They recognize there are too few effective gathering uh, loops for Star Metal and Orcacum. I can't speak. To improve the gathering experience, we've decreased the spawn timers to allow smaller gathering loops as well as increase the total amount of places players can farm for these resources. We've also adjusted gold and platinum or nodes spawn rates to match silver and ore spawn rates and good luck and happy mining. So they added multiple new spawn locations for Star Metal or Orcacum. Uh, to the world across eight plus zones that's where i think a good choice especially like when you start putting it in lower tier zones uh that it ends up just kind of like for me when i'm a player and i see something that is like out of my my league it has me excited to be like i can't wait to go back and farm that i want to come back for that here in the future updated respawn and timers of star metal and orca calcum to match all iron ore which is at 33 percent reduction for star metal 50 percent reduction for orca calcum man market prices are going to be changing in flux there uh, updated respawn times for gold and platinum to match silver ore and uh, there's a 33 percent reduction for gold and 80 percent reduction for platinum respawn times market shifts boys time to make some time to make some moves if you guys are paying attention to this economy here uh tier four hides are currently more uh rare and uh, than they would like while tier five are more abundant and we've seen this happen with numerous crafting so they've uh they basically caused a bottleneck of tier four hides and tier five hides to be less valuable we've made a change so that the leveling bands at which the creatures drop specific tier of hides to help alleviate the issue they're going to continue to monitor the incest for future changes so the new updated level range for tier one is one through 35. i don't know why we have two and three missing out of this equation but it is what it is uh tier 4 is 36 to 55 and tier 5 is now 56 to 66 previous level ranges uh are essentially where it was uh t1 1 to 41 t4 36 to 50 and t5 46 to 66 so you can see here just a slight uh, adjustment but overall we'll have to see one of the things that's always annoying is that the higher level thing is is not as valuable i i think at the end of the day if something's more rare it's always interesting when it's just not not needed because nobody everybody's just hijacking around it uh, economics man it's it's a hell of a thing gear and items they've made some several adjustments uh elite chests now have a 15 percent um and i figure they missed uh put in the percent chance to drop a uh, 50 umbral uh, which is i think a really interesting change t5 mana potions drop uh, chance has been reduced by 55 50 uh, percent t4 mana potions drop chance has been reduced by 25 percent i think they're also trying not to have too many people like you know at least incentivize those level of potions lucky rabbit's foot is now on a luck safe table and um what i'm very kind of curious about is what you guys think about that to me i've been getting lucky rabbit's foot during the whole rabbit event and they're really just not that valuable so i don't know if this is a good change or a bad change i'm not gonna sit here and pretend like i know what that means so if you guys but this is something that stood out to me while reading those i was like i'm gonna ask everybody and see what they they think about it increase durability t1 tools remove weight for some quest items some just good quality life stuff here legendary refined materials drop chance and aptitude boxes have been reduced legendary refinement materials drop chance and different gathering has been increased uh skinning legendary refinement materials has been reduced and rarities of legendary refining and legendary materials have been adjusted so the refinement is epic and the refining materials are legendary uh pvp reward track they've adjusted the thresholds from 2000 6000 12000 to 2000 5000 10000 for experience turns out it was taking slightly longer to level up increased salt rewards they adjust the potion pack rewards level 60 they added gypsum and umbral shards to the first and second notches i think that's actually pretty uh, pretty important they added an icon for level milestones it's pretty straightforward fixed an issue where pvp reward emblem pop-up was showing as an achievement name instead of granting a title text 
They added new PvP perks alongside the PvP reward tracks. Penetrating backstab, PvP only. Backstabs penetrate 10% of a player's armor. Penetrating headshot, headshots penetrate 7% of that player's armor. Factoring rend, the block uh, breaking of a player inflict rend, reducing damage absorption by 12% for four seconds. Purifying crits, PvP only. These are all PvP only. I don't know why I read that again. Critical hits remove one buff from a player with a cooldown of 10 seconds. Exhausted exploitation or explosion. Exploitation, yep. Uh, hits against exhausted targets and flicks slow, reducing movement speed for 15% for four seconds. Cannot re-trigger on the same target. Alcratious punishment. Deal 8% additional damage to players with haste. Sturdy fortification. Blocking attacks adds a stack of 4% fortify on self for each blocked hit. Oh, wow. That's... As somebody who's uh, taking a sword and shield in, that's actually going to be very handy. Uh, shirking heals. After successfully dodging an attack, heal for 100 health. Each armor piece with this perk adds a stack. Wow. Holy crap. That's going to be big. Um, oh, man. I wonder. I mean, it, like 100 doesn't feel like a lot. But again, if you got that, if you, like sometimes I, I feel there are some people who are just really good at dodging. And I uh, imagine just being able to kind of dodge and weave and, and heal and just getting frustrated trying to attack that person. Uh, Siege Ward uh, receives 6% less damage from Siege Weapons. Mortal Empowerment. Player kills grant a per, uh, persistent 2% damage bonus that lasts either 20 minutes or until downed. Death, game exit mode, etc. Duration refreshes on reapplication. Remember, this is PvP only, but that's not uh, just for... Uh, arena so that could actually be kind of uh kind of substantial uh siege ward uh, received less six percent less damage from siege that makes sense uh and i think i went over that one and kind of just didn't register invigorated punishment ability to deal three percent bonus damage per buff on target uh shirking in power after successfully dodging an attack obtain in power increasing damage dealt by four percent for 10 seconds refreshes when a new stack is applied all right, and then uh, fix some other uh, rewards, UI social, etc. Add a notification when player joins game mode with not enough room in their inventory to accept rewards, and players should no longer be stuck in a loop for the trial of Scriven Faction. And the Soul uh, Warden Epitaph Interactable is now a place where players can reach it with no issues. So that's some of the changes that just got rolled out. I kind of told you guys about the bugs. I'm having a good time. I'm very excited. I got some special announcements that hopefully I'll be making uh for you guys here in the next couple weeks i'll let you know when i can announce stuff and uh thanks again for the support thanks for being here hopefully you have a wonderful day and hopefully i'll see you next time but until then take care yeah it's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments that's right you know me when it comes to destiny i'm off with the clan and I'm glad you're feeling better. Ooh.